Houston, figure out how to work this thing. That's all right. Yeah. All right, hold on. We're going to go live in two seconds. Okay. Okay. You don't have a pencil, do you? And welcome in. We are live here from Frawley Stadium with a blue hand matchup. First pitch swinging. That's and that ball's going to drop. Yeah, you're right, Joe. Yeah. So Ryan Gray starts off the game. First pitch of the inning. I don't have a pencil, just oh, a pen, right. Joe. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> first pitch better not make first any mistakes. Pitch. Yeah, exactly. Uh, first pitch of the inning there. I actually thought the center fielder had a shot on that. I did too, yeah. but, um, you know, playing here at Frawley Stadium, we, we are, you know, thank you for tuning in here on Delaware Live. A little different, Joe. The field's a little different. They see things a little different. Yeah. Not used to having uh, – um, the stands behind, so when the ball's coming out, it's looking a little different. Yeah. Ball one. Well, Joe, we got two teams heading in different directions. Mount Pleasant coming in at two and six, and you have Concord nine and two. Nine and two. Nine and two. Yeah. Yep. yep. Right now. Yeah, and uh, you know, talking to uh, Coach Hamburger. Um, earlier in the week, you know, or even last week, he was concerned because he had a couple injuries. He yeah. Felt, he felt like they were going to struggle for a couple weeks, but they they were able to stay in the win column. Yeah, I know they battled through a couple, and I know they have one of their players out right now. Yep. Um, and they got their – they ended up getting their um, their catcher back. So. Yep. Yeah. Curveball in there. Pitcher wanted that one, but – 3-0, though. Yeah. Mount Pleasant looking to strike early. And that would be a way to get their confidence up here. Yeah, did you, what did you say, six and two? Two, or a two, two and, and six. six. That's not a yeah. ton of games, so. No, exactly, that's yeah. not a lot Yeah. when you think about it. Try pick off, no good. Uh, as as I see, uh, as we see, uh, Jackson LaPearl throw a couple off-speed pitches. Or wait till I tell mm -hmm. you about uh, about uh, Candy Cummings, <laughs> who is the so who is the credited with the invention of the curveball in baseball. As we get a foul straight back at the oh boy at the uh, pitch in the majors from 1872 for about six years after pitching in some semi-pro leagues, but. Um, he is credited with uh, throwing the first curveball in the game of baseball. It's, uh, it's uh, some amazing work there. <laughs> Why didn't they name it after him? Well, I don't you know, know, like the Ephus. Yeah, did he, did he create right. that too? And there's a first strikeout. Nice pitch there by LaPearl. He gets the K on Parker Ilgas. That'll be our first out. Yeah. Evan Shubio now hitting in a three hole from Mount Pleasant. Joe, and you're going to see some familiar names in here. We're going to know some people, especially from both teams. Yeah. Having me and you having played at Mount Pleasant. Yep. And now you're teaching at Concord, so yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you see a lot of these kids on a daily basis. Yeah. Yeah. Halls are busy, but uh, I catch up, catch up with everybody from time to time, and. Uh, the, the, I know that I know at least at Concord the roster is not huge this year. Yeah. So there's there's a limited amount of players, mm -hmm. um, you know, on the varsity. Yeah. Luckily, I know that too, Joe. You know yeah. why? Because I uh, sell all the my all the BSN stuff to Timmy. See if he can <laughs> diving get catch. Wow. What a catch. Great catch. Dylan Cruiser with the diving top play candidate already early in this game. What a catch by Cruiser. And he just, he stayed with that. He just kept running and running and running. Laid out. Yeah, I mean, he he, he didn't give up on that ball. And it's no. a big field, so. Yeah. Hmm. What 
What a catch by Cruiser, though. I think that ball was going to fall fair, too. Oh, I think so, too. Yeah. There's strike one. Yeah. Up to bat now is Cooper Berry, the senior. Barry will be playing shortstop. Pearl, nice curveball. Yep, dropped it, dropped it right in there. I forgot the guy's name you already said about. about uh, it, but. Uh, his name was William, William Cummings, went by Candy Cummings. I wasn't able to figure out why his nickname <laughs> is Candy, but I do know some uh, interesting facts. He was only about 5'2". 130 pounds. Oh boy. Which is small even for over 100 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. Strike three. The Pearl dealing on that outside corner, and he wants to live there. How about that? Get out of, get out of a little bit of trouble there, Joe. Yep. Lay out, and then strike out. We had two strikeouts in the two inning. Two strikeouts there, yeah. in the inning, yeah. Gave After up, the single. Gave up that leadoff single. Exactly. And on the mound, you're gonna recognize this name, James Simmons. Yeah. Pitching for Mount Pleasant. Yep. Just saw his dad, talked to him a little bit ago. Actually hanging out with the ADs. Um, Mr. Neff and they, Mr. Jacobson before you got here, Joe, mm -hmm. talking with them three. Yeah. Obviously they all are familiar with each other. Yeah. Uh, having worked in the school district and throughout. Yeah, definitely. I talked to little James down on the field earlier. I said, you ready to go? No pressure. You know, we got the cameras on for you. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I knew uh, I, I knew that uh, he was always a baseball player. Oh, yeah. This is the first time I've seen him. Uh, I've hung out in a lot of dugouts with him in, play um, in high school. Legion. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's an athlete just like his father, though. Yeah. I mean, this kid doesn't – I don't think he takes a sport off, a season off. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them busy. That's why I said we're going to recognize a bunch of names just because of our affiliations, obviously. Yeah. You know, looking down at some of these names. Yeah. Leading off is going to be Andrew Furco for yep. Concord. On the mound is James Simmons. No, I haven't had the luxury to play with Mr. Simmons yet, but I hear he's a really good golfer. <laughs> I got to get out there with him. I yeah. got to text him. We got to catch up. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty funny. What was I looking at? I was looking at something with the golfing the other day. Somebody was, uh, I can't remember. It was probably you. They were <laughs> talking uh. about golf, but, uh. I actually played well at Deerfield. Yeah. It's a tough course. Yeah. I'm not going to yell out my score yet, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun day, needless to say. Yeah. It was a really, really nice Friday to be out there. Yeah. Tonight looks a little different. We might get a little bit, going to get a little chilly here tonight. Yeah, it's been dropping down so to low temperatures. Um, Almost every night. I know. Every night. I know. Yeah. We haven't been the most favorable spring sports weather, I can tell you that. Starts them off with ball one. <laughs> Again, this is Andrew Furco, the shortstop for Concord. Simmons leaves that one up a little bit. Big gap here up the middle, huh? Second baseman shaded. Yeah, well, maybe that's uh, that's their plan. Maybe they think that he's going to be late. Yeah. On Simmons, Simmons throws a curveball, uh, off-speed pitch outside though, gets back to the backstop. Throws that over for his first strike. Four. Walks him. Puts the first batter on. And Joe, I know we talk about it a lot, but 
First batter walks, usually scores. Yeah. 75% of the time. Yeah. Yeah, the percentages are not good at every every level of baseball. And that throws behind him there, and that ball's going to get away. Oh, it hit him. So oh, it, it hit, hit him? him. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, he takes his base. I, I didn't see it hit him, but I didn't either. the umpire is right there. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we're obviously up here in the booth. So here's uh, Cruiser who made that fantastic diving catch out there in right field. And that was Colin P.A. who was hit by the pitch. Yep. He's going to take first base. And there's a steal. And he went on the move. And both runners are going to move up. Was that a Coach Timmy Hamburger call there? I think so. You know, uh, Simmons is having trouble locating the plate. It's making it really difficult for the catcher to not only catch the ball, let alone make uh, a throw. There he goes on a pass a ball run. now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, he's going to have to find the some, – Simmons going to have to find the plate. Yeah, and it's tough. Um, I, I don't know if you pitched here, Joe, but we've played yeah. here enough. And, yeah. you know, pitching on this mound, obviously – at Mount Pleasant, the mound's higher, um, mm -hmm. you know, at the high schools. Yep. Um, but it's it's a little different uh, here, you know, when um, you have to throw on a pro mound. Yeah. Getting your 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 distance and timing down, and uh, you know, makes it kind of tough. So James is obviously getting trying to get used to it, and there he goes, back to back strikes. Yep. Catcher's Derek Smith. He's uh. Not hitting today, but he's the catcher for Mount Pleasant. Oh, <laughs> that ball was a little high. Yeah, Simmons obviously wanted that. That ball is going to be fouled out of play. All the way back. Somebody gets a souvenir. Actually, in high school, you have to return the ball, so. <laughs> and there's his first strikeout. Yeah. He comes back and gets Cruiser. Number three hitter in the lineup for Concord. He gets him down. <laughs> Kevin Barrow, catcher. I know Timmy was... Happy to get him back. I had stopped over to school one day, and yeah. he was telling me that his catcher was out. Yeah. But uh, glad to have him back. He was struggling a little bit. And that ball's going to be fouled off of Barrow. Yeah, and Barrow's a junior, and I know their backup catcher, um, Brooks, uh, is a sophomore. Okay. And I know Brooks was ready to go, but. He did, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, he did. He actually was uh, doing pretty well in that game. Yeah. Oh, and that one's going to get passed. Simmons has a really nice curveball. I'm just not sure they're – Smith's back there ready for it. He uh, seems to just be struggling. Yeah. Needless to say, that gets another run in. Ball's outside. He's coming on the curveball and the fastball. He's just he's we we saw this the other or last weekend. He's coming. Uh, Simmons is across his body a little bit too much. Everything's kind of going. That one was a, a nice, pop fly to right. Nice pitch there. See if they can. Is make it going to stay play. in? No, oh. it's going to hit the screen. <laughs> Ball got stuck up in between the padding and the screen. Yeah, I think he's going to adjust. It just takes a little bit of time. Even when you, you know, you don't get to warm up here on the mound too right, much. Right. You know, you have to go in the bullpen. Um, you know, you're used to playing on a high school field. Yeah. There's a hit to second by Barrow, and they're going to get him. Nice play. That's Shubio at second. He makes the play. The pitch.
pitcher, Jackson LaPearl up. Trying to see if he can help himself out here in the bottom of the first. Mm -hmm. Evens the count at one on one. You just stay there, Nick. He'd be, he'd be in good shape. That curveball's dropping in on the inside corner. And you can see the movement where we're at. It looks good. Yeah. See, there you go again. Yep. Comes right back with it. Yep. Nice little bend in there. Throws it again. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know where that was, but uh, we'll have our one of our uh, favorite umpires joining us for a little bit here. Maybe he can tell us where that pitch was. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe across the plate high. Boom. Boom. Nope. nope, no good. That one came in a little low. Yeah. Runs the count full. That one's hit the center field. It looks like he's going to be underneath it. That's Gray out there in center field. Makes the catch, and that'll do it for one, Joe. Yep. Two nothing lead here. Conker gets two on a couple of pass balls. But uh, Mount Pleasant will be coming up here in the top half of the inning. We'll be right back after some messages from some of our sponsors. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned, community-based news. Free to every reader, because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware Live. Our state, our news, our home. Ferris Home Improvements did our roof, all of our siding, including our shed, and also the windows on the house. They did an outstanding job. Our house is warmer. It's insulated better. Our utility bills are down. Our quality of life inside the house is better. We got what we paid for. Ferris was right on top of everything from the beginning. The project managers communicated every single day that they were on the job, whether it was the roofers or whether it was the siding or the window people. All the guys that worked there were great. The girls on the phone, everybody that we talked to, they, they've been great to work with. I would recommend them to anybody. They take what they do personal, which is very nice. And it showed in the work that they did, the communication that they have, because they did a good job. And they did a good job for a good price. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Welcome to Premier Physical Therapy and Sports Performance. We're a locally owned outpatient physical therapy practice with convenient locations in all three counties in Delaware. At Premier, we have experienced physical therapists with advanced credentials, but their hospitality, passion, and enthusiasm is what makes the difference for you. Find our convenient locations at PremierPTSB.com. You may have tried physical therapy, but have you tried Premier? And welcome back, Delaware Live, powered by 302. We are here at Frawley Stadium for a Blue Hen Conference matchup between Concord High School and Mount Pleasant. Right now, Concord is leading two to nothing after a couple of miscues from Mount Pleasant in the bottom of the first there. Yeah. And we'll see if they can answer back. LaPearl gave up a hit to the first batter, but then settled in after that, Joe, with a couple of strikeouts. And he got some uh, nice defensive help from Cruiser in that diving play in right field. Yeah. Curveball, Burr fights that off. Gets him swinging there, evens the count at two.
Wind up for the Pearl. It's going to be third baseman's ball. It should be. Yep. 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 That ball is going to go to Colin P8. Makes the catch in foul territory. And that's the first down of the inning. There's James Simmons, pitcher. Yep. Seeing what he can do to help himself out. The Pearl gets that call down, low and away. I know Simmons is saying, I threw that too. <laughs> Where's the call for me? Yeah. <laughs> Simmons line, but it goes right into the glove of Andrew Furco short. Two quick ones. Yeah. Reed Erickson, I can see his dad here. Kid we played with, Brian Erickson mm -hmm. at Mount Pleasant. And of course, his mom, Megan, mm -hmm. who we went to school with. So there's another name we knew. Um, along with uh, learning about the curveball today, I learned that uh, catchers used to place themselves about 20 feet behind home plate. <laughs> um, I remember that. Yeah, so they, they'd be all the way back by where the backstop was and wait for the ball to, to trickle in. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the umpire would be out behind the pitcher's mound. So that pitch is taken high, high for a ball. but Yeah, there's a league around here. I think it's like 1890 rules baseball. Okay. And uh, if if you they play at um, uh, Fort Delaware, but if you mm -hmm. ever – look at it, it's pretty neat and I know a good friend of mine is always trying to get us down there yeah. and I, you know it's just tough trying yeah. to get it down there but uh, if you go watch it's pretty interesting you know the foul territories and the way it is the way it's set up and yeah. the way it used to be sharing gloves yep that brings the count full to Erickson Foul it off, stays alive. Mount's got the uh, Kelly green, huh? Kelly like green it. jerseys. I like it. We yeah. always wore Hunter green. Yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was thinking. I Coach Limina. And he's going to walk him. That ball was down low and inside. Good at bat by Erickson. Yep. Brings up Jaden Jones for the Green Knights. A little high. Yep, yep, takes that ball high. And Joe, we do have another game going on tonight. Um, I don't have any updates yet. Maybe I can check it, but we have a softball game. Redline Christian versus Conrad. Okay. So if there's some fans on here who want to watch softball, go on and check it out. Yeah. Two good teams, actually. I'm just going to leave that up. To ball two, we have Mike and Jason on the call down there. And Craig? And I was, I was looking. It looks like Conrad has a good baseball team this year, too, right? Yeah, they just lost to Sally's, though, okay. on a – kid was pitching a perfect game through four innings for them, Reiner – and uh, two big hits by Sally's, and okay. There's strike. Nope. nope. Going to call that low. Three and zero oh now. Yeah, I think they were in rank number five yeah. in the state. They they've have a really good, good team. They've had some good wins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they suffered the loss last night. 
Matter of fact, I wrote the article, so. Okay. <laughs> Zarnicki hits a triple yeah. in the bottom of the sixth inning to go ahead in that game. It was a good game. Actually, uh, Mr. Wilson, who's going to join us for a little bit, he actually called it. And it was a 90-minute game. Wow. 3-1 here now. And the Pearl gets him hmm. swinging. Full count. Three and two, two outs. You'll see Erickson on the move. I'm throwing another fastball here. Oh, of course. He doesn't he's late. He's late. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. And he does. Oh. Oh, and he ball. He went to lift, um, went to lift his hand. Ah, uh, he was see close, it? wasn't he? <laughs> see it, he? He lifted, went to lift that hand, and then pulled it back down. He did. Thought it was a little low, I guess. That's gonna, that's gonna be a walk. Yeah. Colin Cotton here. The left fielder, coming in, chance to do some damage here. Takes strike one. Got a nice crowd to, today between these two schools. I figured we would. We're up in North Wilmington, you know? Yep, yep. Strike two as he throws the high fastball past him. Got the whole Concord softball team out here. I saw. Yeah, they had a game earlier today. I'm not sure how they did. Coach K, saw Lisa. And there's strike three, LaPearl comes right back with three fastballs and ends that inning. The top of that inning, sorry. Settled down after two walks, Joe comes back and gets the big out. Yep. I should have asked the girls, Joe, I didn't ask what, uh, how they did. I was down there yeah. taking their pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw them leaving as I was uh, during last period of the day. Yeah. So I'm see guessing if, they headed south. See if Larry's out here. I just saw. He's not. In, he's not in shouting distance, Joe. No. What do you? Anyway, Simmons is back on the mound here. We'll see what he can do. They have a couple of games here tomorrow night too, Joe. Not sure who it is. Okay. Have to take a look, but I know we can't make it, and if we do, it'll be late. Yeah. Well, I can't. I don't know. Yeah. I'm with you. I think I'm doing softball. Oh, are you? Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah we're going to have Pat, too, tomorrow, so that would be a good, good, uh. Yeah. Oh, Charlie Lynch. Yeah. So, so I would just like to see Simmons' release point is uh is, is a little there you oh didn't get the okay. call. <laughs> anyway, anyway, that, that that looked much better than the first pitch. Yeah. The release point was a little bit lower. He stayed on top of that curveball, so we'll see what he throws here. Oh. Up a little. Oof. A little high. Yeah. But not a bad pitch. But he look he looks smoother. He looks more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, this inning. Mm. He 
a four pitch walk there. Looks like t the game tomorrow here is going to be St. Mark's versus Unionville. Okay. Yeah. That. Yeah. High school. Yep. Okay. Unionville. Uh, I was looking when I was looking at the schedules. Unionville's playing uh, Sally, St. Mark's, a couple other. Okay. I think even Apo. Uh huh. Um, they're coming down uh, this year to play a number of games. I'm I'm not sure who's coaching Unionville these days, but there must be some kind of connection there. Okay. This is Jack Pope mm -hmm. hitting for Concord. Look for the bunt. That should be a strike on the attempt. Thought he left it out there, didn't he? No? I guess not. Guess not. Nope. Oh. Tries again, doesn't get it there. Simmons looks over. Lynch is back though. He's going. That ball's off and to the right. Yep. I believe we have a new catcher, Joe. Can't see the name. Doesn't look like Derek Smith, though. No, you're right. Uh, Didn't see. Number seven? Ground ball. Catcher's got it. Inside. They're looking. Working out even better for Concord, huh? Moves him over. Is it Cooper Berry they put back there? No, Barry was a short. Oh, maybe it is him. Yeah. So this is first Ryan, out. Ryan Brooks. Yep, Ryan Brooks, the first baseman. Yep. Outside, ball two. Infield's in, they want to cut the runoff. Mm. That's another ball. Simmons gets the outside corner there. Yep. No didn't, good. Yeah, that, that didn't didn't drop. Didn't come in enough, did it? No. He walks him. And that's going to bring up Jarrah Wright, the center fielder. He takes ball one in the dirt. Curve ball. Ahead, right, back and out. Not sure why Mount is not holding Brooks on at first, but. Corners are up. Well, that ball's going to get the run in. They're going to get one. Trying for two. No good. And that run's going to score. Yeah. That's going to go down as a sacrifice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sack sack bunt for, it wasn't really a bunt, it was like a half swing. Yeah, it was a half swing, yeah. you're right. 
We're back up to the top, Furco. Well, Runner's going, he rips it down the left field line. Off the padding down there, he's had trouble with it. They're sending him right home. Here comes Furco in a third, and he's safe. Triple. Yep, two scores, runs score, yeah. Scores two runs there. Yeah. The ball ricocheted off that little, uh, you know, stand, cutout, stand yeah. out down there in the left field line and, and scooted did. right past the left fielder. That scores two more runs, huh, Joe? Yeah. yeah. No, one run. They had one run run. Yeah, one run. Brooks. Brooks came around. Yeah. Foul ball. <laughs> Off the top of the net, quickly down 0 2. Oh. Simmons hits him. Didn't he hit him last time too? Let me see. <laughs> yeah, that's pie. Yes. Yep. He hit pie. P A. P A. Yep. I know. You weren't up no. here for the Timmy Hamburger pronunciation. Well, you class. know it's funny because I I played uh played with a kid and they pronounced it pie, but PA. I know. I know. Apologize on that one. It's all right. <laughs> it's gonna bring up Dylan Cruiser. In the dirt, but he's coming home. He got him hung up now. Oh, and he drops the ball. That runner, PA, actually moves up to second base on yeah. that, so it yeah. worked out. Yep. Pitch is outside. Cruiser goes fishing for it, though. Brings the count to one and one. Back to us. Fouled straight back, yeah. Mount has two outs here. They can get this out and get out of the inning. Yeah. Curveball stayed in. Brings the count full. Oh, didn't get that. Walks the bases loaded. Number two, Kevin Barrow. Number two, Kevin Barrow now stepping in. Takes that ball high. Just must be just crossing the plate high, Nick. It's 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 in the in the. Oops. And that ball's gonna get passed, and it's gonna bring in a run. Yep. Furco's gonna come across there for another run. All the runners move up. It's a five nothing lead now. And there's a ground ball to the right side. Stabbed at it, throw, and he makes the play. As Shubio 
Gets the third out. Mount Pleasant will get out of that inning. Well, Joe, that'll do it for two. Yeah, Concord picks up three. Mm -hmm. Three that so inning. So it's a five nothing lead right now for Concord. Heading into the top of the third. We will be back here on Delaware Live, powered by 302, as we take a couple of moments for our sponsors. Your home, your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here, and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets, and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution. We are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Regulars have been enjoying Grain Craft Bar and Kitchen since 2015 for award-winning food, great drink selection, and live music. Now it's your turn. Bring your friends and family to our locations in Newark, Kennett Square, and our waterfront locations on the C&D Canal and in Lewis. Even your dogs are welcome on our heated patios. Enjoy lunch, dinner, or a weekend brunch that Elle Magazine said was one of the 50 best in the country, and find out for yourself what keeps people coming back to Grain. Not a regular? Stop in and we'll make you one. Regulars have been enjoying Grain Craft Bar and Kitchen. Assurance that your HVAC system is what you need with Ambience. Ambience provides you with over 25 years of experience in the heating, cooling, and plumbing industry. The team at Ambience Heating and Air Conditioning provides high-quality residential HVAC installations, maintenance, and repairs in new and older homes in the Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania tri-state area. You may not realize it, but half of your energy costs go to heating and cooling. Make sure your energy dollars count and call us today for a free estimate. 302 2 239-HVAC, 302-239-4822. Get the assurance that you're... And welcome in. We are back here on Delaware Live. Powered by 302 is Mount Pleasant comes to bat here. It is number three. Ryan Gray, the leadoff batter. We are joined by Charlie Wilson, the vice president of the Umpire Association here in Delaware. And how you doing tonight, Charlie? Pretty good. Pretty good. Glad to be here. Thank you for coming on. Can you turn his mic up a little? Three, Joe. The white. Three. 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 There you go. Turn it up. Go ahead, Charlie. Give me mic check again. Yep. It a pleasure being here tonight. There we go. We're good. All right. <laughs> so uh, thanks for joining us. You know, we had you on the show. We talked about it. You guys are struggling getting some umpires. I've been to a few games that uh, that have um, been just one umpire. You know, you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, it's, uh, it, it's definitely been a struggle this year. And uh, – it started about 2017, 2018 is when we started to uh, drop off with officials. And uh, you know, many people blame the pandemic. Pandemic helped it along. Of course. Um, but, you know, we're, uh, we're making do with what we've got. And we are, you know, we have gotten a, some new people this year. Um, but, you know, we could definitely use more, no yeah. doubt about it. And hats off to you guys, honestly, because without you, we don't get these games done. And, you know, in every one of the varsity sports, I haven't seen a game canceled due to the shortages. So we know you guys are working overtime. So we appreciate that. And, uh, you know, we talked to you guys on the show. We talked to Dan. If there's anybody wants to get involved, there's many places they can do. Just, you know, reach out and ask somebody, right? Not hard to find you guys. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you could definitely find us um, on the, we're at IBUADE.com. 
Um, we also have a Facebook page as well. So uh, if you're interested in becoming an official, by all means, reach out. Yeah, we need them. We need them. I, God, I, you know, I, I remember when we were playing back in the day, we didn't, if we didn't have two or three a game, man, <laughs> it was rough. But anyway, you, you saw a good game yesterday. Me and Joe talked about it. There, you know, that uh, Sally's Conrad game came down to basically the bottom of the sixth inning, and it was a 90-minute game, so – a rarity, a rarity to see a game 90 <laughs> yeah, minutes, but crazy. that was a fantastic game. And uh, was very, uh, very proud to be a part of it. Yeah, it was a good game. Uh, the, every fan walking out of there, unless they were Conrad, uh, Reinert, who just pitched a gem, but, well, you know, leave a couple pitches up, and that's a tough Sally's team. So there's a hit to center field, but it looks like he's going to be underneath it. Yeah. And in center field is... Jair White. So what are you seeing in this game, Charlie? Anything stand out to you? Nothing's been crazy. Not too many crazy calls. Everything's been pretty plain. A lot of pass balls right now. And, uh, you know, with you, it's the same way, right? I mean, you're used to calling games in a different backdrop. You don't have, you know, the big blue block back there. It's an adjustment to come here and play, isn't it? Definitely an adjustment. You got the batter's eye out in the center field. You're in a minor league ballpark, a beautiful minor league ballpark. You got the lights, 95 in the background. It's definitely uh, something to, to behold. You got the crowd behind you in a minor league stadium. Yeah. So it's definitely a different atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we talked about a little bit um, when you're, you have your strike zone, you have your adjustments, you have the things that you have to do. So it's also an adjustment period for you when you get here after seeing some of these mounds that are, you know, 18 to a foot high, right? <laughs> foot and a half. Well, well you, do, uh, you do Goldie Beacom. Oh, yeah, and that you, field and you, is. And you, and you see the, uh, how high that is a Doyle field. You see how high that pitcher it's mound gotta, is there. It's got to affect your zone, right? It does. The higher the mound is, especially if you're taller, I mean, you've got a 90-mile-per-hour fastball coming down at you, and it's uh -huh. even closer. Yeah. You know, so the higher the mound, of course, that's going to be more of a favorite of the pitcher. And there's a, another fly ball to center field. That was ill gas with the out. Now it's going to bring up Shubo. Shubio, sorry. With two outs. Yeah, and we see some of these calls. You know, he gave him a nice pitch share, kind of favorable, a little low. But. You know, when you're a pitcher coming in, it's good to know the umpire and their strike zone, right? So, you know, you said it to yourself. You have a – yours is kind of tight. My strike zone's tight. Yeah. I mean, everybody that sees me, they, they will – they know exactly what's going to be coming. Uh, but the one thing that every head coach, every assistant coach, every player will tell you what they're looking for from a, a, a good home plate umpire is consistency. Correct. You know, as long as you're consistent, your pitchers should be able to adjust to you. Uh, but that's all they ask for is consistency and go out there and hustle. Yeah, because no one's perfect. And we don't want to get to the point where we have a machine or, or something calling our balls and strikes, right, which I see them. Uh, I heard about some interesting things they're doing in the Big Ten this year where they do have kind of like this field and uh, that sits out in front of the plate. And when the ball comes through it, the uh, umpire is notified in his ear and it's a ball or strike. They experimented it last year with an independent ball, and this year, like you said, they're they're experimenting it with some college, as well, and they're still ironing out the bugs to it, you know. But that's what uh, you know. That's what people want to see is a little more automation. Ground ball, right side. Yeah, I, I'm not for all that. So, <laughs> well, there's a human element to it and everything. Correct. But, but they, you know, they people want more consistency, and they but there is a human element to the game too. Well, and I and you know, and as we get the third out there for Mount Pleasant, um, I get that right. And I know that you, people should say also um, embrace technology. There's things that we do every day that we change. You know, I get it. You know, but some of it you want to still have that person back there and make it feel like it's still a, you know, a, 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 a human element, a part. human element part of it. You know, and one of the downfalls to that. That, that force field or whatever they have out there is if a pitcher throws a ball and it hits down in front and bounces through it, it's still going to tell the umpire to strike. It's still going to tell the umpire to strike. Yeah. And what they're ironing the bugs out also is the pitchers that have the 12 to 6 curveballs too because it's oh. really hard for them to read that too. But, again, it's, it's a work in progress. Yeah, yeah. Interesting, huh? Well, I don't want it to ever take a human's job. <laughs> I'm with you on that. <laughs> 
No, but like you said, one of the biggest things that, that you know, we see around here and a lot of the teams and, and uh, um, players in every sport around here is just having the consistency. And, you know, you also said that your job, what's your other job title? Well, um, at IBUA, I'm vice president of the association, yeah. but I lead our, our instructional program as okay, well. Okay, so then there you go. I mean, that's something that you guys teach that you would want all your umpires to be kind of on the same wavelength, right, and be consistent. Consistency and hustle. You know, uh, you don't want to be out there and you don't want to have what we call cement shoes. You don't want to be a statue <laughs> behind the plate. We want you to get out there and be mobile and move because, again, players, coaches, they want to see that. They yeah. want to see the effort that we put out there. Yeah, I'll tell you that. I, I, uh, I, always, I always congratulate and give you guys when I see the effort of busting down the line or coming out being in place to make the call and make the right call, right? Because if you're behind the play and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know, that's that's where you're and that ball's gonna be dropped. Another miscue. Now Pleasant drops the ball there. Yeah, he, he called for the catch, the left fielder did, and then he was he was unable to uh to secure it there. And uh, sorry about that. That was Jackson LaPearl, the, the pitcher, yep. helping himself out there. Yeah, that's good to know, uh, you know, Charlie, is we have Charlie Lynch coming up, as a matter of fact, that, you know, there is some consistency in that you guys are training and you're, you know, um, working on your skills and, you know, evaluating film, I'm sure, and different things like that. And I don't think that a lot of people out there get to see and know that about our umpires. That ball's coming right at us, and it didn't come in. <laughs> but uh, there is an effort there. Here's a ground ball to third base. High chopper. Comes through. Nice play. The Pearl is going to advance on that, though. And that's a nice play by Ilgas. That'll be the first out. You know, and Charlie, you can talk about it too, you know. Each one of you has strengths and weaknesses, right? And then you also have the way that you see the game. So there's a lot of things you can teach them, but there's still going to be a little bit of what that person can bring or bring to the game as Simmons tries to get him at home. Nice play, but didn't get it. And LaPearl's going to come in there. Well, I mean, every umpire's got a different skill set. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and it's you know, and it's up to the training, our, my training team, to help develop, uh, develop the umpire skill set, um, you know, to be the best they can be out there. You know, it's it's a work in progress. I mean, even for me, for example, I've been doing this a long time, um, but there's things I work on every single year as well. So I mean, it's out there self enrichment. So yeah. you should never be complacent. We're never, I'm never complacent. I'm always out there working on my game. And, uh, you know, even the, you know, the finer, you know, the better umpires also are out there working on their game. But, you know, it's a work in progress. Everybody should be, every one of my guys should be working on something throughout the course of the season. And, and see, that's good to know. I mean, just like a player, you guys are doing the same thing. You're, all, you're working on what you can do, and that's another pass ball by Mount Pleasant. And that moves up. Is that Pope, Joe? Sorry, talking nope, to Charlie. Nope, you're all good. Uh, fielder's <laughs> choice, that's, I believe that was Avent. Okay. Um, because uh, Brooks is up now. This is Brooks. Okay, yeah, no, so it was, it was Pope then. Yeah, it because was Because he's hitting for Avent. Yep. And there's Brooks, hits it over. Good throw. Good, good play. Nice play yeah. there. By the second baseman, Shubio. And that'll get the second out, but that moves the runner up to third. Yep. Two outs, and this brings up Jahair Wright as he takes a ball. Yeah, you know, Charlie, I think some of the one of a lot of the things is the, the common player probably or a common fan base hit back up the middle, and Wright's going to get an RBI, and that's going to bring in another run for the Raiders. You know, is that they just show up and and umpire. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, but they're part of the game. I mean, it's, you know, it's part of what we deal with. And, um, 
you know, after the 2020 season was canceled, I mean, I'm happy to have fans back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I did a lot of games. Of course, there's right on the go, and the throw is off to the right. He's going to be safe. I did a lot of games in empty fields and empty gyms, and I got to tell you, I didn't enjoy any of it. <laughs> I, 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 just like everyone else, we're, we're big fans too, and we want to be in the moment like everybody else wants to be. Yeah, I mean, last year we had some fans come back. Obviously, we still had restrictions. Um, I'm happy to see this year that we have much more, uh, you know, we have better fans. We have uh, more fans out, almost to almost pre-pandemic levels here. So I'm happy to see them out there and, and enjoying the game. Oh, me too, sir. You, you couldn't say that better, you know. Um, and it's nice to get out here, see a game tonight. The wind's not as bad as we thought. Not as cold as it was last night. We talked about that, right? 32 degrees. Yeah, definitely not quite as chilly. It's still, you know, still kind of cool, but uh, definitely not not as cold as last night. Yeah, three and one now to a Furco. And uh, yeah, we've had some some windy, cold days for this spring sports season so far that. I haven't had some fun at some of them, I can tell you that now. <laughs> uh, I can definitely relate to that. It's uh, definitely coat and jacket weather, and when you're out on the bases, uh, umpiring with, uh, you know, with it being so cold and everything, it's not fun if you have to stand out there because you're standing out there and you're not moving. Yeah, I mean, and talk about that. I mean, weather affects you just as much as it affects them. Well, I mean, we dress in layers. You know, we have a base layer, so, I mean, we – we dress for the conditions that we're going to be dealing with. Uh -huh. You know, I'd say about five weeks oh. ago, I did a, I did a game in, a, in pretty much in a snow situation, <laughs> oh, so when it snowed man. out. So, <laughs> you know, but again, come July when the heat index is over 100 degrees, yeah. you, know, it, you know, you know, you go from one extreme to the other. You have to, you know, got to be adaptable to it. Yeah. Well, I mean, and there's other things that play into that. Wind, you know, rain. Are you going to cancel wind, especially with fly balls and fair balls and all that kind of plays in doesn't it add mother nature into it you got rain then you, you then you could have thunder and lightning to go with it pass ball again both runners move up it's gonna be a three and one count here to Colin PA And he walks him. Bases loaded here. Looked like they were going to get out of this inning. And, Joe, they're running into a lot of trouble here, huh? Yeah, Simmons is just having a hard time being consistent. You know, he's, he's uh, that release point on the curveball is, uh, is not consistent. And sometimes the curveball drops in for a strike. And sometimes it's, it's out of the zone. And then, you know, the, the fastball as well um, as we get uh, – I was wondering when Coach, Coach Raisin yeah, 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 was going to come out and talk to him for a minute. Oh, well. Yeah. They're, they're going to make a move. They're going to make a change. Yeah, he, he just has been struggling, like you said. I mean, again, um, just like, you know, we talked about with Charlie here, um, there's an adjustment, you know, in this environment, playing on a minor league field with the fans, the ball, the backdrop. Yep. You know, all that. So he just uh, couldn't get it going today. So, who does it look? Who'd they bring in, Joe? Can you see the number? That is. Is yep. it the no. second baseman? Number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's eight? Yeah. Oh, they're bringing in Smith, huh? He was the catcher to start the game. So maybe that's what Coach was thinking ahead. So he's going to get as much as he. He's going to get as many warm-up pitches as he as as, or what's the rule here now when you have the uh, pitching change? Yeah, if it's a regular pitching change, he'll get eight pitches. New pitcher gets eight pitches um, to start the game, as well as any reliever that comes in gets eight pitches. Now, if he comes out because of injury, he'll get as many as he needs. Uh, to there you go. That's right. He'll get as many as he needs to warm up there, and uh, if he stays in the game, he'll get five to start the next inning. Okay. Yeah, because I remember we had that instance at uh, at Goldie. You can hear. Um, uh, one of the one of the pitchers, one of the pitchers came out with an injury, and it was, you know, as much time as you wanted to get. So, but Derek did start behind the plate 
And now he's going to be pitching. You don't see that very often, do you? <laughs> see it more times than you think. <laughs> I see it in Little League. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I exactly. I was thinking sure. the same that, thing. That's the only time I usually see it. <laughs> in fact, I think uh, you and I. Well, that was, how, yeah, Joe, that was how we did it in Little we League. We switched one, one caught, one pitch. One pitch, and yeah. then, yeah, exactly. And he throws ball one to start off the batter, uh, who I believe this is Cruiser, right? Yes. Yes. Yep. Ball two. Right fielder, Dylan Cruiser. That's three quick. He's down three. Got nowhere to put him. This will walk another run in, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, they... Uh There's the first strike. As of right now, uh, you know you're, you're really you're really looking at. I believe all all of uh, Concord's runs are are unearned. Um, they got they got a couple RBIs. Uh, Furco has two, two RBIs so far in the game, but that's going to be another another run, another unearned run for a Mount Pleasant for a Green Knight pitcher so far. So hopefully they can they can work on that. That brings up Kevin Barrow now. Dylan walks. He gets the first one over there. Mm -hmm. Ball in dirt. He's out ahead, but it's going to go off his back. And he's going to score. That could possibly bring two as Hamburger is giving him the go. And that is, that's going to score two. And there's another miscue. That just doesn't help the Green Knights. Yeah, I, 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 know, I know that is, that's hard for a high school catcher, but that's one of the ones you may want to just, just eat it. Eat it. Yep. Just yeah. eat it and not make that throw. Because it, 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 I mean, how many times do we watch baseball and we see balls at third base either go into left field or go towards the dugout, um, you know, past the third baseman trying to make a play. So that's a tough, that's a tough throw to make. It looks inviting, though, when yes, you're the catcher yes, there. exactly. But you're right. I, I mean, it would have been a better decision to um, not throw down there because of that yeah. that mishap. So we'll see if Smith can get out of this two and two now. Looks like Dan's had an easy night out there, hasn't he? <laughs> not say that too loud. <laughs> Well, Dan's the assigner, right? There's a base hit back up the middle. Here comes another run home to plate. Here's a throw. Safe. And Barrow moves up to second on the base hit up the middle. And they just really traded spaces there. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want Gaeski out there not getting paid for tonight, right? Like he's <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Like it was too easy, huh? <laughs> well, actually, those are the games we want. We want them to be as, you know, we want them to be as simple as possible. Yeah. But again, philosophy for us out there, and I tell tell my guys this is to go out there and be as unnoticed as you possibly can be. Yep. Yeah. 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 You you're you're just really there to. Keep the flow of the game right, the safety going, and then let the kids determine, right? That's it. The, the kids are the stars, stars of the show. We're not. We're third-party arbitrators. We're out there to keep the peace. And, uh, you know, if we have to step in and, and mediate something, then, then we do that. Mm -hmm. Only when the situation arises. But we're third-party arbitrators. Yeah, but we need you. We need more. So if there's anyone out there that wants to get involved, please, please reach out on their Facebook page. Uh, what'd you say their website was too? Yeah, ibuade.com. There you go. And uh, Facebook also, we're, we're there as well. There you go, that's what we need, we need more. We need these games done right for the fit, for the kids and the fans, right? You know, you want it, you don't just want it um, done and not teaching these kids a lot of the right things too. And he's gonna get the strikeout. Yeah. 
Derek Smith. And that'll end the inning. Yeah, that'll finally. Or the top of the fourth anyway. Finally end that inning, yeah. Um, but, yeah, you know, you, you just – but we need more. We need good. We need trainable. We need guys that want to be involved. Um, and women. Doesn't matter, right? Whether Doesn't you matter. Help out. Doesn't matter. Now, just like, you know, with any sport, it's a commitment to do this. Yeah. Definitely a commitment to do this. Um, but uh, we definitely need more people. Can never have enough right now. So, absolutely. Well, Charlie, thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time as always, getting to see you. And I told you last night I was going to get you on, so we, you know, we had to get, make sure we got you some airtime today. Pleasure. Pleasure <laughs> to be here. We're going to take a break. Thank We're going to come back for the bottom of the fourth inning. We're going to pay some bills. I'm sorry? Yeah, top four. Sorry, top four. I had the wrong inning. Sorry about that. Well, I was – talking away but we'll be right back how you doing my name is Mike Cassidy I'm the founder and president of Cassidy painting I started back in 1984 incorporated in 1986 I never had the word no in my vocabulary uh, when someone called me to do a job, I always said yes. Whether it was a struggle, whether it was seven days a week, uh, sun up to sundown, it, it didn't matter. And with that philosophy, we were able to grow to the size we are. We employ close to 80 uh, individuals. We really enjoy being in the family business. Um, I look forward to coming to work every day. And it's so nice to work with the people that we work with in the office. Uh, we really become a family with them. We really create a family experience around here. And Cassidy Painting is a very diversified company. We don't say no to anything. We deal with everything from epoxy floors to painting buildings to uh, spray foam insulation, spray fireproofing. If it deals with a coating, we can handle it. So when our customers call and they're under the gun and they know the need to get a job done, they know who to call because we perform. We've always been performed. We've never been replaced out of 37 years of business. For any of your painting needs, we can handle it. And welcome back in. We are here for the top of the fourth inning. Concord has a commanding 11 nothing lead right now over Mount Pleasant. And up to bat now for Mount Pleasant is Mr. Cooper Berry. He started out at short, now he's catching as he takes strike one. Two down low. We know LaPearl will love that pitch every day, huh, yeah. Joe? Yeah, LaPearl, La <laughs> uh, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's staying around the plate. You know, he's uh, mm -hmm. staying around the plate on almost every pitch. And there, strike three. Be strike three. Um, but let me just double check. But, you know, he, he has walked two batters in the uh, second inning. But, um, you know, they didn't hurt him. So, other than that, his control has been excellent. He did get behind a few batters in the beginning. Yep. But then worked out of that right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. This brings up a burr. Yep, right fielder. Yeah. I mean, right now, Joe, the only hit of the game was the first hit. The first at bat. Yep. By Gray. He broke up the no no right away. Fouls that off to stay alive. 
Down 0-2. Still got a good crowd here, Joe. Yeah, people. Not uh, bad. People were trickling in, in. First and second inning for sure. And you're right. There's quite a few people when I, as I look down here. Concord has a really good following actually today. Yeah. I'm sure that has to do with Timmy running around school, right, telling everybody to come. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's uh you know he's he's busy throughout the day man he's he's in and out of the building with oh driver's head oh and, yeah uh, and uh you know everybody's everybody's got something going on but mm -hmm. um Ooh, nice pitch the pearls asking where it's at he's kind of scratching his head there back yeah his head yeah brings the count full yep Burr down the right side, gets through. That's going to be the second hit of the game. Yeah, it was good, good swing on that one. By A. Burr. Yeah. Yeah, that was the best swing of the night, to be honest with you. Yep. For, that, for Mount Pleasant anyway. Just going to bring up start pitcher, James Simmons. See if he can't do something to help himself out. Check in the other game. Conrad is actually leading Redline Christian Academy three to one, bottom of the fifth. Okay. I know. Uh, I believe Redline is ranked fifth in girls uh, in the state in softball. Had a couple of big wins. Big win over St. Mark's. And there's a strike, mm. and the steal by Burr. Simmons couldn't hold up on that. No. Simmons hit a line drive his first at bat. He takes a strike on the outside corner. One ball, two strikes. So as, as they call time here, I was saying I'd get back to uh, um, our friend who invented the curveball. So <laughs> he, he uh, so the story goes, as, as Simmons swings through strike three, yeah. um, Candy Cummings was on the beach one time and he, he was throwing shells in the ocean. And he decided to take, take some of those clams and see if he could add a little spin depending on his, the pressure of his finger. And he was like, oh, that actually worked. So he came back to, uh, he, I think he, he was playing for, a, 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 I think, I believe a semi-pro team in Brooklyn at the time. And he started doing it with the baseball. And uh, it worked out really well for him. And, and the, the, the story goes, you know, because it was, it was a long time ago, that he refused to tell anybody how he was doing it <laughs> for a long time. And then eventually Classic. other people, other yeah, as started other to people, learn. Other people started to learn based on what he's doing. But um, he uh, pitched a number of years um, of professional baseball, and then uh, prior to entering, uh, you know, what's what's considered major league baseball, I believe he pitched eight years in major league baseball. Interesting. Yeah. The pearl strike. Yeah. Comes back with a strike. 2-1 now. Yeah. 
Another strike right down the middle. Mm -hmm. Even to count at two and two. This is the D.H. Erickson. I believe he walked. Yep, based on balls. Mm -hmm. Swinging. And LaPearl gets the strikeout to end the inning. So Mal picked up a hit. They did. But uh, wasn't able to move the runner over. That'll bring us to the bottom of the fourth. Joe, we're going to take a break again, step aside. Yep. Give some of our advertisers some airtime. We'll be right back here on Delaware Live Sports, powered by 302. High Five Hospitality was founded in 2004 when three guys teamed up to introduce the Buffalo Wild Wings franchise concept to Delaware. They now operate eight Buffalo Wild Wings, six locations throughout Delaware, and two locations in Maryland. B-Dubs has weekly and game day specials on their delicious food and beverages. For award-winning food, great drink selection, and live music. Now it's your turn. Bring your friends and family to our locations in Newark, Kennett Square, and our waterfront locations on the C&D Canal and in Lewis. Even your dogs are welcome on our heated patios. Enjoy lunch, dinner, or a weekend brunch that Elle Magazine said was one of the 50 best in the country, and find out for yourself what keeps people coming back to Green. Not a regular? Stop in and we'll make you one. Stop regular. in one of their convenient locations today. The Stone Balloon Ale House features a unique blend of crafted food and an array of spirits, all flavored with a dash of nostalgia. Our culinary mantra is comfort food playfully reimagined and we prepare seasonal favorites that strive to please the palate and resurface a memory. Limestone Barbecue, from our mouth-watering Texas-style brisket, fall-off-the-bone chicken, and St. Louis ribs. Southern-style sides, mac and cheese, baked beans, cornbread, sweet tea, and our homemade pickles. Be prepared as your bread will be your napkin. Yup, we are that kind of barbecue. Expectation. You'll have a tough time choosing between our exclusive dishes to help get you through the day. French toast, French crepes, Belgian waffles, and of course, our famous Eggs Benedict. High Five Hospitality's mission is to operate five brands that serve high quality products with exceptional hospitality. And welcome back here on Delaware Live Sports, powered by 302. Up to bat now for Concord is Charlie Lynch, the DH. <coughs> He fouled the first pitch off, takes strike two. I like the way Smith works out there, though, uh, I yeah. will say. Yeah. Gets up there, gets on the mound, gets his sign, and off he goes. Curveball. Woo! Woo! My. I don't know where that was. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that, that just kind of just dropped right in there. Yeah. I don't know if you fooled him or not, but fastball fouls it off. Why not go back to the fastball? I'd throw that hook again. I think he surprised the umpire. Maybe. I mean, it started really high and, and dropped right into the zone. It, looked, it, it did. Appeared, so. It was a good pitch, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. That one left up. Yep. Even to count of two. Left it up. Yeah. That was high. Full count. Oof. Walked him. He started out that at bat well. Did. But uh, he lost him there. Mm-hmm. Jack Pope now steps in for Concord. Smith still high. So Nick, I was looking at uh, I was looking at ball players again from that era, and uh, so we here for Smith's pitch. Strike swung through. Um, uh, Willie Mays is ninety years old. Wow. Um, which I which I 
thought was interesting. Joe Morgan's 91. A couple other guys on the list that I, I noticed. She takes ball inside there. Uh, remember Roger Craig? Yes. The, uh, the manager? Yeah. For San Francisco? He played in the majors, and uh, he is 91. Wow. I'm just looking at, you know, some of the people who played. Foul ball. Foul ball straight back. Um, you know, around World War II and, you know, prior and those kind of things. And, you know, Joe Morgan was on the third best Reds team ever. <laughs> or third best Major League Baseball team ever, this 1975 Reds, at the, least, the at least Reds. in my opinion. Nice curveball there, but spoiled. What happened there? Did somebody Curve. call timeout, though? Uh, dead ball. Oh, dead ball. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, because gotcha. of the foul. Yeah. Gotcha. So he got a little piece of it there. Yeah, he did. I mean, like I said, he spoiled that. That was yeah. a great pitch yeah. by Derek. Yeah. It's amazing to think of those ages, though. <laughs> That ball's going to get away. It's going to come all the way back to the backstop. He just moves up to second. Yeah. Outside, walked him. Ball four. Back to back walks there for Concord. Yep. It's going to bring up Ryan Brooks. Yeah, it's. Uh, Is that Lisa's son? Yes, correct. That's what I thought. Yep. Yep. He's a he's a sophomore. I knew he's young. Right? Yeah. And there goes the runner. Moves up another 90, 90 feet. Yeah, and this has been kind of the name of the game tonight. Uh, I'm looking at, you know, I'm looking at things. We got Mount Pleasant pitchers, uh, you know, have walked six and hit two. And um, Concord doesn't have that many hits. Three. Um, but There's a when they've hit had to them, short. Yeah. When they've There's had one. Them, it's been Can they get two? Oh, and the ball skips by the first baseman into the dugout. Hmm. And that run's going to score, but yeah. they do get an out. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Brooks gets the second on the throwing error. And it's going to bring up Jarrell Wright. Or no. We have a pinch hitter, Alec Foster. Okay. Timmy going to the bench. He's got a short bench. Like you said, yeah. it's tough getting players out this year. Yeah. Heard that from a lot of coaches, though. Yeah. Nice pitch there by Smith on the outside. Two and one now to Foster. There's a fly ball right field. And it's going to be caught by Burr. Tagging up is Brooks. Here's the throw to third. It's offline. He's going to slide in. But they do get a second out of the inning. Yep. Another pinch hitter. Jeremy Fisher. Hitting for Conkert. Take strike one. He ripped that. He shot the center uh, field, yeah. but it looks like they're going to be underneath it, and that's going to be the third out of the inning. Yeah. And that'll do it. Mount Pleasant gets out of that. Well, it looked like it could have been worse. Yeah. That inning. Yeah. 
But that'll do it. That's going to send us to the top of the fifth inning. And Joe, we're going to take a break again and pay some bills. And put out some word from our sponsors. Thank you for joining us here on Delaware Live Sports, powered by 302. High school athletics is not what it used to be. The sporting goods industry has been disrupted. Adding to coach and athletic director daily challenges, BSN Sports stands ready to change the fundamentals of our industry, giving our customers the advantages they need right now. Your dedicated local sales pro is supported with nationwide team service, including sport and category experts. Get the look of D1 colleges and pro teams with our program that streamlines ordering your staff apparel, player gear, and fan wear. Stretch your budget with our fundraising solution, free and ready in minutes. Our campus branding products are perfect for boosting school and team pride. BSN Sports has the advantages you need right now. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Lupo Italian Kitchen in downtown Rehoboth Beach. Come check us out. Located inside the Hotel Rehoboth, Lupo serves coastal Italian cuisine with fresh pasta made in-house daily. Lupo features plenty of unique craft cocktails and an extensive award-winning all-Italian wine list. Popular dishes include lobster bucatini, veal meatballs, grilled swordfish, and eggplant parmesan. Lupo Italian Kitchen on Rehoboth Avenue, serving happy hour daily and dinner seven days a week. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Cammer from Solo Scott Concepts. Cammer from Solo Concepts. Today we're at Blue Coast Seafood Grill and Raw Bar in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Come check us out. Located in the Rehoboth Gateway, Blue Coast features indoor and outdoor dining and serves beautiful, simple food that highlights the flavors of Southern Delaware. With chef-inspired daily specials, an award-winning wine list, and an extensive list of craft cocktails and local beer, Blue Coast is the perfect spot for a night out. Blue Coast Seafood Grill in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, open seven days a week year-round for lunch and dinner. See you soon. Hi, I'm Scott Cameron from Soil Concepts. Today we're at Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Come check us out. Located in the Rehoboth Gateway next to Blue Coast Rehoboth, Thompson Island will follow the Soil tradition of serving beautiful, simple food that will pair perfectly with our fresh homemade beer. Thompson Island is a perfect place to have dinner with your family, enjoy happy hour with friends at the bar, or spend a day in the beer garden playing bocce ball and ping pong. Thompson Island Brewing Company in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, open seven days a week. Home. See you soon your community. It's not just where you live, it's where you belong. At Dover Federal Credit Union, we understand what it means to be local. We started here and we're not going anywhere. We're as local as it gets and we like it that way. We're not just a financial institution, we are the local credit union that you can trust. Local people, local decisions. Dover Federal Credit Union. Your home and welcome back in. We are back here for the top of the fifth inning. And we will let you know right away there is a mercy rule that can be in effect. Mount Pleasant is down 12 nothing right now. They're going to need three runs to stay in this game, Joe. Yep. And in the pitch now for Concord is Kevin Barrow. And he is facing number 15, Jaden Jones. Ball one in the dirt. And there's a ground ball, third base. Wow. And there's a first out. Uh, foul ball, never mind. They're gonna say that it was a dead, dead ball. Still gonna be a strike. Strong throw by the third baseman there. He, he double clutched that too and he He'll guess. He still still threw it across, uh -huh. threw a strike across. Yeah, wow. So we're going to get Jones back in the box here. Let's 
Seen that a few times, Joe, with a foul ball off the foot. Yeah. You know, and Jones did kind of struggle getting out of the box there, and maybe because the ball yeah. hit him in the foot. Yeah, yeah. But uh, we've seen it overturned a couple of times, to be honest with you. Yep. Three to one. Three one now, sorry. Three one count to Jones. Nice pitch by Barrow there. Low outside corner. And just a bit outside. Yeah, that was that was a little outside. It was. Yeah. I can't I can't blame Barrow for wanting it though. No. <laughs> Jones will go to first on that. And, and then Smith is going to hit now. Looks like he moved in for Cotton in the nine hole. Outside Barrow. See if Mount Pleasant can stay alive. They're going to need three runs in order to force a bottom of the fifth to keep this game going. Barrow striking. Mm -hmm. Nice pitch on the outside corner. Brings the count to one and one. Nobody holding on the runner there. It looks like they're just playing right behind him. That's going to be an infield fly. Mm. And it's caught by LaPearl over there at first base now. Back up to the top, Ryan Gray. Yep. Let off the game with a single. Takes strike one. Strike two. Gets ahead fast. Yep. Fouled it off. In our other game, Joe, yeah. Conrad is still leading red line three to one in the bottom of the sixth. Wow. Yeah. And the runner goes. Jones just takes that bag standing up. Yeah, that'll be like a runner indifference there. Mm -hmm. Or uh, fielders, sorry, fielder indifference. So he'll move to second. First and second, two outs for the red line. Uh oh, and there's a shot. Right center field. That ball is hit deep in the gap. It's going all the way. Almost to the warning track. And there's our first run for the Mount Pleasant Green Knights. Yeah. Gray crushed that. Yeah, he did. He put a charge into that one. <laughs> I knew off the bat that thing was a shot, huh? Yeah, yeah, the way the way it sounded. Mm-hmm. That brings up Ilgas, and he pops up the first pitch, and it's going to go right near the backstop. So 
So Mount Pleasant gets on the board, but they're going to need a couple more in order to stay alive. Foul ball right side. Looks like it's going to stay in play and almost. Couldn't get it. He's got life. He's got two strikes, though. Gonna have to protect here. Yeah. Curveball, woo! One ball, two strikes <laughs> to Il Gas. See if he throws it again. And he, and he does. Yeah. But that ball's loose, so he can run. They got to get him at first. No, they don't. He's going to be safe. Even at the strikeout, he still gets there, Joe. Yeah, so Brooks kind of took his time. Making it uh, interesting. Brooks kind of took his time behind the plate there, getting out, making that throw. So we'll see how that affects. Play to the warning track. One run scores, two run scores. And in to, in to third base with the triple is Shubio. And they are staying alive, Joe. <laughs> There's two. Uh... Two well hit balls into right center field this inning into right center field this inning for the Green Knights. They don't want to go home. No. Yeah, that was a big time hit there. Yeah. <laughs> Strike one on the outside corner. Barry was not happy with that. Uh -uh. Ground ball, third base. They're going to come home. Are they going to get him? Yes, they oh, are. Goodness. And they get him out of home. If he slides, he's probably safe. Yeah, that's what his coach down the third baseline is telling him. He should have gotten. He definitely needed to get down on that one. Yes. But yeah. But they get him at home. A burr now. Oh, he takes ball one. We said it was either three outs or three runs, and Mount Pleasant got three runs. And right now it's three runs, yeah. Steal. Three and zero. Now to Burr. Burr steps out. Got an open base here, so yeah, it's not a big deal if Barrow walks him. You get a force play everywhere. He's going for the strikeout, though. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to do his best to uh, end this inning right here. Walked him. Brings up James Simmons. Simmons. 
another poor Jay Simmons. Simmons hits it to left field. Popped it up, and it's going to be caught. That's going to be a third out. Mount Pleasant gets three to stay alive, but now they got to hold Conker. Yep. Conker needs one run to Which, end this game. As I look at the scoreboard, Nick, they have yet to do this game. So we'll see if they can come up with a with a zero on the uh, on the board there moving forward. Looks like they're going to send Smith back out to the mound for the bottom half of this fifth inning. And the Green Knights did what they needed to do, Joe, yep. to keep this game going. Two big hits, a double and a triple. Yeah. And they're back in this right now. But as we talked about, one run, and that'll do it for us. Yeah, and that'll be it. So they have to try to keep Conquer off the bases. Looking at our schedule next week, we have a soccer game, Padua and Caravelle. I know that'll pique yeah, your that, interest, that Joe. Be, that should be a good one, yeah, definitely. Um, Caravelle, yeah. obviously, the you know usually the head of the pack for Division Two, and yep. Padua for Division One. So it'll be a good matchup. Something we don't get to see in the state tournament. Yeah, I haven't seen. Uh, unfortunately for me, I haven't seen either of those uh, girls teams play this year. But that that'll be a good. That's going to be a good game. If you're a fan of soccer, for sure. Yeah, and if you haven't seen Padua's soccer team. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I know they, they lost a couple players, but they're still yeah. one of the top soccer programs around Yeah, in, uh, in girls' soccer. Looks like we're going to have a doubleheader from Caravelle next Thursday is we're going to have San, um, softball, Apo at Caravelle also. Okay. So we're going to have two crews working that night down there. Um, Apo is the number one girls team. Caravelle was the number one girls team uh, softball, but they lost to an out-of-state team, uh, which dropped them, and Apo's still undefeated. Apo had a big win today. And we're here starting off. Pop fly to short, and Good play. it's going to be caught. And I believe that was Colin P.A. Brings up Dylan Cruiser. One pitch, one out. Curve ball from S Smith. Nice pitch. Yep. I like his curve. Yeah, it's that 12 to 6, mm -hmm. you know, coming over top. Another one little off the plate there. Yeah, that one dropped down a little low. Mm. Over through just a little bit there. Brings the count to two and one. Was it what was the game the other oh it was the uh the Goldie Goldie Beacom's relief pitcher. Or no, it was um who was Goldie playing the other day where the strike two relief pitcher's uh, baseball cap fell off every time? Oh, my every God. Time every he time he ball. threw. Yeah, that was annoying, actually. Yeah. Um, that was pretty funny. Team from Jer – oh, did that hit him? I believe that was the Sciences, right? University of Sciences? Nah, or was team it from Jersey. Um, um, Bloomfield. Bloomfield, yep. Black and orange. Mm -hmm. Black jersey with orange, uh, orange lettering. Full count. And that's a strike. Strike three. 
Cruiser caught looking. That brings up the pitcher, Kevin Barrow. Smith gets him swinging first pitch. Center feeder calls it, and that'll do it. Mount Pleasant staying alive. And they will come back with a chance to tack on some more after scoring three runs yeah. in the top of the fifth. And we're going to step away. We'll come right back with the top of the sixth inning with a 12-3 to lead here for the Concord Raiders. Thank you for joining us here on Delaware Live Sports, powered by 302. Ferris Home Improvements did our roof, all of our siding, including our shed, and also the windows on the house. They did an outstanding job. Our house is warmer. It's insulated better. Our utility bills are down. Our quality of life inside the house is better. We got what we paid for. Ferris was right on top of everything from the beginning. The project managers communicated every single day that they were on the job, whether it was the roofers or whether it was the siding or the window people. All the guys that worked there were great. The girls on the phone, everybody that we talked to, they, they've been great to work with. I would recommend them to anybody. They take what they do personal, which is very nice. And it showed in the work that they did, the communication that they have, because they did a good job. And they did a good job for a good price. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Ferris Home Improvements did our roof, all of our siding, including our shed, and also the windows on the house. They did an outstanding job. Our house is warmer. It's insulated better. Our utility bills are down. Our quality of life inside the house is better. We got what we paid for. Ferris was right on top of everything from the beginning. The project managers communicated every single day that they were on the job, whether it was the roofers or whether it was the siding or the window people. All the guys that worked there were great. The girls on the phone, everybody that we talked to, they, they've been great to work with. I would recommend them to anybody. They take what they do personal, which is very nice. And it showed in the work that they did, the communication that they have, because they did a good job. And they did a good job for a good price. We couldn't have asked for anything better. Ferris Home Improvements did our roof, all of our siding, including our shed, and also the windows on the house. They did an outstanding job. Our house is warmer. It's insulated better. Our utility bills are down. Our quality of life inside the house is better. We got what we paid for. <laughs> Sorry about that. We are back. Start a little early here for the top of the sixth inning. 12 to 3 lead for Concord over Mount Pleasant. And up the bat is Reed Erickson. One on one count. Gives him a strike on the outside, outside corner there. <laughs> one ball, two strikes now to Erickson. Curveball got him. Yep. That's tough up in the eyes. Looks good. Yeah. You know? Jaden Jones, who started off the inning last inning when they scored all those runs. We thought he was out, and then all of a sudden he got called back, and they said it was a dead ball off his foot, and that started yep. the inning. He finds himself down 0-2 real quick. Barrow making quick work out there. And gets him with the curveball. The high curveball looks good. Yeah, up at eye level. Mm-hmm. Kind of, and it, it, it's a, a looping curveball, so you're you're kind of reaching for it. You see it up high, eye level. You kind of reach for it. That's high. It's the pitcher now batting, Derek Smith. And he smokes one to left field, but foul. 
out front. What would you call that thing, Nick, out there in uh, the little pavilion? Mezzanine? mezzanine? Pa cut out? Pavilion? Mezzanine? Yeah. It's more given, of a picnic area. It's the yeah. best place here to watch it now because yeah. of the net. But it's given both left fielders a oh, some yeah, trouble the bump when the ball, out, yeah. ball hits it. No doubt. And it's there's a base ball. hit. No, snagged. And he held it. Good He's going to get the out. Yep. Sorry about that. A little late on the camera. I thought that ball got through, but Colin P.A. snagged it. That'll do it for us. That's three. We're going another half an inning here as Conkert only needs one run to end this game. But Derek Smith has been pitching well. The last inning and a half. Yeah. Update, big inning. Redline now leads six to three in the top of the seventh. Oh, wow. Coming back, came back, huh? Yeah, they must have had a big, big game there. I saw there was two outs, bases loaded. They must have got a bunch of runs. Yeah. Five to be exact. Mount Pleasant still holding on. They needed three runs in the top of the fifth in order to stay, and they got it. And now, they need to keep Concord off the board. Looks like we're gonna, we're gonna be starting off with Jackson LaPearl, leading off the inning for Concord. So I was, uh, for different reasons, I'm always looking at some be at some baseball history stuff. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't know how many of you out there are familiar with, uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with Albert Bell, but, you know, he got in trouble for, for corking his bat. Albert Bell, eh? No, I'm yep. kidding. Uh, he, got, <laughs> he got in trouble for uh, corking his bat as uh, strike one there. Smith delivers. Into La Pearl and um, I remember the Albert Bell fiasco. I'll tell you after this batter. <laughs> Pearl to center field. It's getting over the head, head. Yep. and it's gonna roll. La Pearl rounding second, heading for third. Here's the throw, and there it is, the winning run, sitting at third with no outs. Joe. Yeah. He hit that ball well, man. They do. <laughs> so Charlie Lynch he can be the mm. hero here I'd hit the umpire oh yeah in the shoulder yeah, yeah. walk away for a minute that's what Timmy's yeah. telling him to walk down a little courtesy to the umpires <laughs> so anyway Albert Bell the, uh, the opposing manager wanted the umpire to check Albert Bell's bats. So uh, the, the umpire in the first inning actually confiscated two of his bats and had him put in the, uh, in the umpire dressing room, which is locked, right? <laughs> I so, think I've heard this. So the umpire, or the, uh, the manager of um, the Indians sent one of the relief pitchers, as we get a foul ball, deep foul ball, who climbed through the ceiling tiles <laughs> in, down into the umpire's dressing room bats. and replaced it replaced Albert Bell's, bat, Albert Bell's bats with two other bats. Uh, that's awesome. Um, immediately after the game, the umpire recognized that those were not the same bats that he originally placed in his, <laughs> in his locker, which set off this whole uh, – and they, oh and they actually God. called the police and reported a theft. Oh, wow. Um, and it actually, uh, it actually ended up being good pitch good there. Good pitch yep. there. Yep. 
It actually ended up being the relief pitcher. I, the name is escaping me now, but the relief pitcher ended up admitting it only like three years later. Yeah, uh, that's that awesome. That he climbed, Great through story. The, climbed through the ceiling <laughs> tiles to uh, try and save Albert Bell, but the umpire was like, nope, those aren't the same bats. Smith with that big strikeout there. And we have a final. Red line did come back and win six to four. Hmm. Wow. Good game down there for our boys. Here's a ball right side. They got to come home and get him at home, and he's safe, and that will end the game. LaPearl comes through with the big triple, and that will do it for us here tonight. Big win for Timmy Hamburger and his Concord Raiders playing, our, playing their crosstown foe. Uh, Brandywine School District, two teams. But uh, it was a good night, Joe, huh? Yeah, yeah, I saw some, uh, saw some teams we don't usually get to see here at Frawley and um, you know, it was, uh, it was good good for both teams to get out on a Friday night. Yeah, and have get a game. to play in yeah. front of fans. Yeah, You know, it's a beautiful field. I was down on the field this, uh, earlier, yeah. and uh, it's just an immaculate condition. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a nice nice to get down here on a Friday night, have two Brandywine School District teams going against each other, two teams that know each other very well. A lot of the kids and players played a lot. You know, we talk about it a lot. We all went to middle school and then split you know, in high school, so. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun to get out here and, you know, see these two teams. So congratulations to the Concord Raiders as they get the win. Big win, 13-3. to three. Joe, that'll do it. You got any final thoughts? No, that's it. Just, uh, you know, it's like I said, good to, good to see two teams we don't usually get to see. And, uh, yeah. you know, hopefully um, these teams can continue to, you know, to – Try to try to stay Concord stay on the win streak and mount get into the win column. Yep. Um, you know, before the end of the season. And that's it. That'll do it. We appreciate everybody uh tuning in. Gotta check. I think we are. All right. Um all the fans ask us if we're gonna be back for all we usually do all the games here for all eight, uh in high school that we can. We missed one uh today, but either way. But uh that'll do it here. Um, for, from Farley Stadium here on Delaware Live Sports. We appreciate everybody tuning in. we got a couple of good games next week. Please check out uh, our YouTube channel. Subscribe if you don't. That way you can be notified of all of our games when we're gone. And then please support all of our advertisers who are all local just like us, and we can't do it without them. So thank you, here for, thank you for joining us here on Delaware Live Sports, powered by 302. Have a great night. The things that matter most happen right in our own backyard. Our neighbors, our schools, the places we go, and the people we know. And now there's one news outlet where our story is told. Delaware Live. Locally owned community-based news. Free to every reader. Because Delaware's future belongs to all of us. Quality journalism we can trust to help us take on the day. Delaware.